guys, it is Danny, and welcome to this updated video on Hurricane Elsa. So Elsa is a Cat 1 hurricane and we have a lot of watches and warnings in place. So most if not all of our Caribbean islands are being affected or will be affected by Elsa. And so before I go into details... Okay guys, so first things first, let's talk about uh, how it is looking on satellite view. And so we're seeing here that Elsa is starting to look pretty good. It's looking as though it's starting to want to develop that eye. And so the National Hurricane Center is not forecasting any further strengthening than it is now. It's just expecting that it's going to be maintaining its current intensity throughout its time in the Caribbean. And then weaken once it moves over Cuba due to the land interaction. But... I think that we will have further intensification of the system here and I'm going to show you why later down in this video. And so let us go on to those watches and warnings. So as of right now, a hurricane warning is now in effect for the southern coast of the Dominican Republic, southern portion of Haiti, as well as Jamaica. We have a tropical storm warning in effect for St. Vincent and the Grenadines, St. Lucia, Martinique, the coast of Haiti, north of Port-au-Prince, and the southern coast of the Dominican Republic, east of Punta Palenque to Cabo Engano. And then there is a hurricane watch that is in effect for portions of southeastern Cuba. And so guys... There is also a tropical storm watch that is actually in effect for Grenada and its dependencies, Sab and St. Eustatius, north of the Dominican Republic from Cabo Engano to Bahia de Manzanillo, as well as Cayman, Brac, and Little Cayman. So those areas will be impacted by Elsa as we're going to be headed into this weekend and the early part of the new week. And so guys, places that are under the hurricane warning are going to be feeling the worst of Elsa tomorrow, which are Jamaica as well as Southern Hispaniola, guys. And so please, if you have not started preparing please do so and so as i said earlier uh the national hurricane center is not expecting elsa to get much stronger so at the time when it is going to be approaching uh just between Jam jamaica as well as the coast of haiti right there uh the system could still be at its 85 mile per hour and then it's going to gradually weaken as it interacts with the islands guys because of course it's not going to be over the warm ocean waters to feel it anymore and so it is, it is eventually going to start weakening and so we're expecting to emerge into the Gulf of Mexico and it is expected to make landfall somewhere on the western coast of Florida as we head into the early part of the new week and by 2 p.m. on Wednesday it is showing Elsa over southeastern Georgia and so guys just know that the track can still change things can definitely switch up on us Elsa could surprise us so we have to keep monitoring it closely and so guys by tomorrow evening going into sunday throughout the day elsa is going to be pounding the greater antilles uh, the islands of cuba hispaniola and jamaica with a lot of rain and also parts of the cayman islands guys and so please i keep emphasizing to take the necessary precautions and stay safe if you're if you're to be affected but elsa is moving fairly quickly it's moving at 30 miles per hour but the thing is when it is going to be closer to the greater antilles it is going to be decreasing in its acceleration especially when it is about to make that turn when it's over western Cuba, a bit up to the northwest, uh, going into the Gulf. And so we really have to watch it and wait and see what the eventual outcome is going to be. And so guys, as of right now, in terms of our model intensity guidance here, we have uh, some of our models expecting that this might achieve Cat 2 status to expecting it to be a Cat 3 major hurricane, but we have majority keeping it at being a Cat 1. So they're hopping on to what the National Hurricane Center is saying. But why do I think that intensification of the system, some further intensification is possible? So let's go on to the wind shear map and the Saharan earlier map. And so I'm not going to be showing the ocean temperature map because ocean temperatures are favorable and will continue to be throughout the season and so let's first look at the wind shear map so we have the different colors here showing different shear intensities we have the greens meaning favorable the reds being unfavorable and the yellows meaning neutral and so we have elsa being in a region that is mostly favorable and so as this is going to be making its way more to the west northwest we're expecting that it's going to be more in that favorable shear and so that can aid in intensification because when there's a lot of unfavorable shear that is when it starts 
to pose a trouble for the system in terms of its intensification because it starts to rip it up to cut off those thunderstorms. And so looking at the dry air, seeing here that not much is across the Caribbean and the different colors here as for the wind shear map mean different amounts. As we go to that darker orange and red, that is where there is denser amounts of dust in the atmosphere. And the dry air inhibits intensification and growth because tropical cyclones need warmth and moisture. And so Elsa is looking like it is in a pretty favorable environment. And so guys, even though the winds are 85 miles per hour, there are higher gusts. So Jamaica and Southern Haiti can expect that maybe tomorrow night going into early Sunday, uh, maybe even cat two force if the intensity that is expected by the NHC remains, which is its current 85 miles per hour. And so I think that this thing here has the potential to intensify even to a cat two. And I would not be surprised if tomorrow we wake up to potentially a major hurricane. The possibility at this time I would say is quite low, but I wouldn't be surprised because it is in a favorable environment to help it to intensify some more. And so guys, again, if you're in areas to be affected, if you're in the Greater Antilles, if you're in Florida, you need to keep an eye on this, but if you're in the Greater Antilles, there is an imminent threat and you have to ensure that you have preparations in place, ensure that you're not near the coastline, ensure that you're not in a flood prone area. It's best to go to higher ground or somewhere that is more stable and uh, please take the sort of precautions. Ensure that you have your batteries, flashlights, first aid kit and you also want to have all of your important files and documents in something that is waterproof and somewhere that is reachable. So should in case you have to evacuate, you can just immediately grab it and move away as soon as you can guys but the best thing to do from now is to ensure that you are in a safe location and you can go to the hurricane shelters around your area just to ensure that you're okay and if you're not so sure about your area but if your area has a history of severe flooding especially when it rains heavily please elevate guys go to somewhere that is safer because you never know what Elsa could bring and so stay safe guys and so i will keep you updated and when the system does arrive for here in jamaica i will try to get some footage for you guys and in case i don't upload it's because of the power outage because of course that is anticipated especially with elsa's strong winds and so once i can however i will give updates even if it is to post in the community section of my channel so you can check there uh, as we head into late saturday and throughout sunday for updates and so guys that is it for this video and if you found it to be quite informative please give a thumbs up and you can also share your thoughts in the comments or ask a question i'll try to respond as best and as soon as i can and just remember to always be wise and of course i'll keep you updated as time goes by